Siti salva beatis optimorum Anaius loquoractea de selaitor. Hello everyone, my name is Anaius, at least that's my Latin name, and I'm happy to see you, and that's what I just said in the little poem that I wrote for the beginning of this video. I've made this YouTube channel to recite poetry in Latin, Latin and to occasionally comment on it in videos like this in English. So one of the first videos I wanted to make was the rules that I intend to follow in reciting Latin poetry. So you can see where I'm coming from, you can see if I'm living up to my standards, and you can see if what I'm doing is something that you're interested in. So what I'm going to do first is list my four rules of Latin poetry, and then, and then I'm going to talk about them each one in depth. So let's get started. Incipiamo seguitur. Rule number one, stress the correct syllables. Rule number two, use the correct vowel quantities. Rule number three, follow the meter faithfully. And rule number four, understand what you're saying and say it like you mean it. So let's start with rule number one, stress the correct syllables. There, there's been, just the way I say it shows what I, where I'm coming from, but there's been a long debate, a, an argument about which syllables should be stressed in Latin poetry. And I come firmly down on the side that says that for the most part, the same syllables should be stressed in Latin poetry as in prose. You know, there are a few exceptions that are very well documented, help poems fit the meter better, and often help convey the meaning of the poem better. But except for that, you should expect to stress the same syllables in prose and in poetry. That's, that's my position. I get the feeling that, that perhaps the confusion may have arisen because of a teaching technique where students were taught the rhythms of Latin poetry even thousands of years ago, uh, by stressing the wrong syllables to learn the rhythms, and then maybe they were expected to eventually start stressing the right syllables once they knew the, the correct rhythms. Whatever the case, I think that's a bad teaching technique, and what I recommend instead for, for mastering the rhythms of Latin poetry is clapping your hands like we did in elementary school music classes. So I thought before I move on to the next rule, I'd give an example of a, of a brief passage in a Latin poem that I had trouble pronouncing correctly and how I used the hand clapping technique to, to correct my problems. Okay? The pr passage in particular that I had in mind is the first half of line six of the Aeneid, which goes, inferret que deos latio. The, the trickiest word in that passage to get right is deos. Now when you say it by itself, deos is not a problem. It's a two-syllable word. The first syllable gets the stress. Everyone gets that right. Uh, but when you put it in, that, in the middle of that phrase, it's really easy to, to stress the wrong syllable, even people who are trying to stress the correct syllables. And, even, and I was making that mistake myself when I first tried to recite it. And I fixed that by clapping my hands. And I used two claps for a long or a heavy syllable and one clap for a short syllable. And so I just did it slowly at first. Inferret que deos latio, right? And because my hands were keeping the rhythm, my conscious brain could focus more attention on stressing the correct syllables. And once I got comfortable doing that, I could do it a little faster. Inferret que deos latio. And eventually I could get to where I could do it without clapping my hands at all. Inferret que deos latio. So that's my recommendation. Stress the correct syllables and clap your hands whenever you find a particular rhythm a little bit tricky. So that brings us to rule number two. Stress, use the correct vowel quantities. This is not something that is usually a problem in Latin poetry. You know, in, in prose and in conversation, we don't always use the correct vowel quantities, especially, especially if it's extemporaneous speaking, we're having to think of so many other things at the same time that it's all, not always easy to remember to say the correct vowel quantities. But I wanted to make this a separate rule because I wanted to highlight an important implication that in order to fully know the, a, a Latin word, you need to know three things. You need to know the meaning of the word, you need to know all the inflected forms of the word, and then you need to know all the vowel quantities of all the inflected forms of the word. And if you hold yourself to that standard and you continue to review words until you get to where you know all three of those things cold, uh, then gradually you'll build up a vocabulary that allows you to be really good at sight reading Latin poetry. Uh, in fact, I was reading this book, going through this book of Catullus poems a while back, and it doesn't label the meter of the poems, I just had to figure it out for myself, and there was one poem in particular where I had never seen that meter before, and 
I was still able to figure out the, figure out the meter of the poem just by knowing the words. Oh, OK, every, all, the first three lines are always like this. The fourth line is like that. And I figured out the meter. I later found out that that poem, is, the meter is like lesser glyconic or something. I, I can't remember now. But, but that's my point, that uh, holding, paying attention to vowel quantities will eventually get you to a point where you can be a much more versatile and fluent reader of Latin poetry and probably of also of Latin prose. And so that's, that's why I wanted to make this its own separate rule. So use the correct vowel quantities. And that brings me to rule number three, follow the meter faithfully. Now, when a good poet writes poetry in meter, they use the meter to help convey their meaning. Uh, and often a, 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 tr a, a, word, a bit of advice I've gotten in literature classes is if you're having trouble understanding a poem that's written in meter, try reading it very faithfully in meter, and often the meaning will suddenly become a lot clearer. I've seen that technique work for Robert Frost and Shakespeare, and it seems to work for the Latin poets too. Uh, and if you watch, for example, there are YouTube videos of Robert Frost reciting his own poems, you'll find that he follows the meter very faithfully, and it doesn't sound sing-songy. His meaning comes across crystal clear. And Shakespearean actors will, are apparently taught to respect the rhythm of Shakespeare's verse when they're performing. And so I think if it's good enough for Robert Frost and, Robert, and William Shakespeare, it's good enough for the Latin poets too, like Virgil and Catullus and Sulpicia. So, so let's just take a look now at that passage that I mentioned that I practiced in Rule One, where I and, and what happens when we say the, the meter and the stress correctly. You know, in ferret que deos latio. So when I hear that, suddenly, with that stress that way, suddenly the words deos and latio really jump out at me. You know? And even when I and if and 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 even when I try to make that in a very monotone delivery to make sure I'm not, you know, adding my own whatever Texas accent to it. I still, I still feel it. If I do a fake Sean Connery accent, it still, I still hear it. Every, every way I've tried to do it, those words jump out at me. And, I have a, and, and if we look at the meaning of those words, right? it means he brought the gods to Latium. In particular, Aeneas brought the gods of the city of Troy to Latium, and I believe particularly the city of Alba Longa, which he founded. But... If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. And so, so, that's a, so the, this line in, in this poem provides a very quick summary of a pretty major part of the plot of the entire poem. So it seems quite plausible to me that Virgil might want to really punch those words out by, and that might be the reason that he wrote it in a rhythm that a lot of us find hard to pronounce correctly. So, so that's why I want to follow the meter faithfully when I'm reciting poetry, because I want to see what kind of meanings jump out when I do that. Uh, and that's rule number three, follow the meter faithfully. So that brings us to rule number four, understand what you're saying and say it like you mean it. So let's take the first half of that, understand what you're saying. You, to, to give a good performance of a Latin poem, you need to understand what you're saying, and not, and not just like the general, overall gist of the poem, but really how all, how each word, what each word means, how it relates, what you know, what uh, noun this adjective is modifying, how does this, you know, what rhetorical effects are being used, how does this clause relate to this, this clause, how does he move the story forward, all that sort of stuff. You have a good instinctive feeling of of how the poet is telling their story and it conveying their emotion in that poem. And so sometimes it may be useful to read translations and, and, and some supplementary materials to help you understand the poem better. And, and, and that's worth doing in order to give a good performance. The other half of that, say it like you mean it, right? Well, if the poet is asking a question, maybe it's worth trying to make it sound like you're asking a question. If the poem seems sarcastic, maybe seem, conveying sarcasm is the right thing to do. If the poem is sad, maybe try to look sad, you know? Uh, Try to say it like you mean it. And, and, and I think that helps often to make the meaning come through more clearly, both for yourself and for, for your uh, viewers or listeners. So now there are two issues that come up when you try to, that, that I feel like I need to address that when you, when you, uh, with this rule. And, and that is, one, you know, there's not, most good poets open, are open to multiple interpretations. And so talking about one meaning of the poem is, is, is not entirely uh, fair or accurate. And the second thing is that 
we don't know a lot about the melodies of, of classical Latin sentences. We don't know exactly how ancient Romans sounded when they were asking questions. We don't know exactly how they sounded when they were being sarcastic or angry or sad or, or any, you know, how they used rhetorical effects, like how their voice changed when they were using certain rhetorical effects versus when they weren't. Uh, and so, so that, that's, those are some issues that we have to contend with here. Uh, I have two points that I want to make in response to that, how, how, we, how I think we deal with it. First is rule three, follow the meter faithfully. I believe that that can discipline us quite significantly, that if, if my natural way of expressing emotion, and I've had this happen when I've been preparing poems or, or reading poems, if my natural way of expressing that emotion doesn't fit the meter, then I have to try to find another way that feels to express that feeling or idea that feels right to me, but also fits the meter. And I think that keeps me from deviating too far into, into you know, just unapologetic Texanisms in my performances. Uh, the, other, the other point that I wanted to make to address this is that the solution is not fatalism and avoidance. The solution is diversity, right? Uh, so because there's a lot of things we don't know about, that doesn't mean we should just give up on giving good performances. I think there's still a lot we can learn from trying to do good performances of Latin poetry. Uh, but the solution is diversity. So to get multiple interpretations, multiple performances, multiple voices, multiple, you know, uh, multiple native languages. So, and one last thing before I finish this topic is that I don't see rules number three and rules num rule number four being in con being in, in conflict with each other. I see that, that the, I aspire to do both at the same time. Some people may feel like, oh, to follow the meter faithfully, I have to have give up on paying attention to the meaning of, of, and the feeling of the poem. But I don't think that's true. I think you can do both. I think Shakespearean actors aspire to do both. And that's what I aspire to do in these video performances. So those are my four rules of uh, Latin poetry. So now, in closing out, I will list them again so you can hear them all in your ear one last time. And then I'm going to you know, issue my calls to action. So rule number one, stress the correct syllables. Rule number two, use the correct vowel quantities. Rule number three, follow the meter faithfully. And rule number four, understand what you're saying and say it like you mean it. And so if you've heard these rules and you disagree with them, uh, I would be very interested to hear your point of view in the comments. And if you have bibliographic references that you think do justice to your point of view, I'd love to be able to really dive deep into that and if, if you'd supply those. Uh, if you do agree with these, maybe, maybe they've inspired you a little bit, I would love to hear your performances of Latin poetry. Like I said in rule number four, diversity of life experiences, diversity of voices is, will, is, will be extremely useful to us. Like if we could have high quality, a, a wider diversity of high quality poetry performances, I think we could learn a lot. We could get a much stronger sense of how, how Latin poetry worked. Uh, and better judgments about that. And, and, you know, and, and I guess that's to some extent conjecture, but I, sus but I have a feeling that it's, it's not entirely wrong to do it that way. You know? That there's still something of value to be gotten from that. I suspect some of the nuttier things that have written, been written about Latin poetry would not have been written if the people putting those ideas forward had actually tried to walk their walk, to actually try to put their theory into practice. They might have said, oh yeah, this doesn't work at all. You know? so, so yes, I'd like to encourage a diversity of voices. If, you, if, you're, if you're inspired to make videos that uh, follow these rules, please share it with me. Let me. I would love to hear your voice. And I especially would like to hear non-native English speakers, because I can't change my native language. I can do multiple readings of a poem if I think the poem justifies it, but I can't change my native language. Uh, so, and then finally, for me, I, I look forward to learning more about Latin poetry by performing it. And I, I look forward to maybe finding some kindred spirits out there that, that share my passion for this stuff and, and, and that maybe I can have some meaningful conversations with about in the future. So, so with that, I'll leave you until next time. Gratias wobis ago, quia me auscultavistis. Walete.